Anger doesn't solve anything. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna tell you what I see. And what I see is an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. It builds nothing, but it can destroy everything. And I will keep raising banners and I will keep protesting. And it's that simple, Robbie, because I've had enough. A man who was at one point the most famous football fan on the planet. This club is destroying me. I don't care any single one of you that wants to sit here and go overreacting, this, that, the other. Go fuck yourself. I love this club. I go every fucking week. And you know what? Maybe I love this club too much. A legacy built on hostility, conflict, and passion. And helping Robbie create a multi-million dollar company by becoming the poster boy of Arsenal Fan TV. What had happened, you know, we took action straight away to say that we could never ever have him on the channel again. You're representing AFTV, bro. Have some I represent my fucking self. The same thing that made his career ended up destroying his life. It was like any other Sunday afternoon. Playing a game, we were playing Leicester away, start of the season, week leading up to um, the transfer window closing. Arsenal hadn't bought anyone as usual. Olivier Giroud just broke his ankle, I think it was. Um, we needed a striker. Yaya Sonogo was playing up front. And I came out of the ground, I was fuming, drew 1 1, and I see Robbie there. And he's just there like this, standing. Hello, anyone want to? I can't, yeah, I want to say something. I'll come over. I want to. I I so I did said my thing went onto YouTube that night to go and watch the video as you do yeah yeah go into the comment section yeah and everyone's like this guy I like this guy wait this guy is so knowledgeable he knows what he's saying get him on again get him on again <laughs> so I was like yeah maybe we just lost 4-3 to Liverpool in the opening game of the season mm -hmm. and it was day one and it was the same shit as normal so I went ballistic on this video one game is 12 fucking years Wait, listen, no, that's no. what it is it's every single season one how second. many robbie robbie before today since 2010 we picked up six points out of 18 in our opening game why are we always unprepared at the start of a season every single season unprepared but are you honestly saying that you expect people to be shouting venga out on the first day of the season yeah because we've lost one game i did i mean started people have started to know who i was by this point but then this one was the first real viral video where it kind of just blew and everyone was like, right, okay. And I was like, wow, this is like gone mad. And by the next game, you're going to the game. And we'd had people wanting to take photos with you and stuff when you were at the game, mm -hmm. but it had gone from four or five to like 40, 50. Wow. To the point now where we're at home games, you can have up to 200 people a game. It was clear now DT was a superstar. He had somehow managed to transform his life from a broke DJ to an internet sensation. You're now really a part of Robbie's whole business setup. You're like one of the main faces who gets him views and that. Yeah. Are you like being paid for that channel? And no. So you're just doing this for free? I'll go on there after a game and I'll voice my opinion just like anyone else can. Because uh, obviously Robbie is making a lot of money out of the channel and he's doing very well for himself and good mm -hmm. luck to the lad. Yeah. But you're now like, where YouTube channels would look at this, talent. You're yeah. one of his main attractions. People are coming to that channel and he's getting good money for advertising revenue because they want to watch you. DT had become the building pillars of Arsenal fan TV. The lifeblood of the channel. Hi, welcome along to um, a brand new podcast. It's called All Guns Blazing. You could almost go as far as saying he became bigger than Arsenal fan TV. I've <laughs> never heard that before. I love your DTV too. <laughs> His story from the outside seemed like the perfect Cinderella story of a regular everyday football fan becoming a star. 
But when you scratched beneath the surface, it was far from that. I think, he ma I think he makes a good too. point there. I think well, he makes no, he's a... not making a good point. He is. Because, because he's got, he's got some enough. money and put a super chat, he don't make a good point. He's making a he's good a fucking no. He's making a because good point. Because when have I compared fucking Artella you have. and fucking him? You have. You have. fucking haven't, man. You have people compared. People piss me off. No, you it's have other people it. that compare him. You've got to be able to take criticism. Other people that compare him. You've got to be able to take criticism. And mention my fucking name. You've got to be able to take criticism. That's your problem. You see, he's, he's, he's stuck his neck out, he's broken oh, his phone. He's, <laughs> listen, he's stuck his, he's stuck his neck out. Who's digging, 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 digging at me? Constant, Who's fuck digging? off. You've got to be able to no, take criticism. At the end of the day, uh, for me, no, no Mikel Arteta at the moment, you have to, if you're going to defend him, I want to hear somebody defend him. I want to <laughs> hear somebody defend him. It was clear from day one, DT had an uncontrollable temper. What many thought was just an act. Calm your mouth. Calm your mouth. Calm your mouth. Calm your fucking mouth. You ain't about that life. Don't fuck about. As time went on, it became apparent. It wasn't an act. This all boiled into one of the nastiest, gruesome, and most vicious collisions in YouTube football history. We were playing a game and it had been arranged for about October time. It must be two or three years ago now. And it was meant to be seven ringers and four regulars. Mm -hmm. So you had to be on the channel. So we turned up at the game and FTV have got a team full of ringers. And I'm playing for United Stand and, and three or four others, including Sophie, who's a girl. And um, we're like, well, what, what, you know, what's going on here then? You, you, well, you said it, we kicked off the game and um, we went one nil up. Puts it away. Yeah! Flex, bro! Couldn't miss that one. One nil to the United Stand. Hey, get the ball. Get warmed up, DT, mate. Get some legs in you. Get fucking warmed up, mate. I'm playing centre midfield, he's playing centre midfield. Of course it's being filmed. I mean, some people even said, was it scripted? Because it was mm. just ridiculous how it happened. Yeah. So he gets the ball, he's about five yards in front of me. He decides he's going to try and nutmeg me. And, uh, so I close my legs like that. Yeah, and, and I take the ball off him and then I go past him, I skin him. Right. As I go past, he sort of grabs me in one of those sort of um, Ram Ramos Salah arms. Yeah, yeah. And as we go down, I'm like, I'm not having this. I've played football for years. And as we're going down, I booted him in between the legs. So he starts trying to get, kick me, kick me, kick me, like bloody zippy. Yeah. The referee takes us over and he's like, books DT. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, re I'm really in shit if he's booking him. Yeah. And he goes, and you, I don't know what you've done, but I know you've done something and just gives me a yellow card. So then, then it's been set. Anyway, DT ends up bloody getting sent off and it all goes off from there. Obviously, we won the game mm. as well. And it was just a massive... Um, can you use the word L now? Massive L for them. Shit. Red card. Early showers, fam. Antiperspirant for DT, fam. Fuck off. You're fucking DT. cheating, cunt. DT, you're representing Arsenal. You no, fuck off. TV. You're just fuck off. Game, yeah, DT. fuck it. Done. You got the game called off. Called off. Finished. Done. Fuck off. DT, man. Robbie, come on. You're representing AFTV, bro. Have some I represent my fucking self. You're a fucking cheat. Hey, what happened? What happened? Hey, what happened? Hey, what happened? You're a fucking cheat. What happened? When they sent me off because I turned around and said, How's that a foul? Yeah. Oh, oh. Stop, hey, man. You know when, when a man's from Luton, bro, you can't take him out, fam. DT, no. blood, you get me? He felt. Who's calling me? Is it a girl? No, it's not, lad. Jeez, I won't be answering that. It was a foul. It was a foul. And he's gone right into my head and started swearing. Ref, ref, ref. And I'm sending off of him. You're a fucking cheat. You're a fucking cheat. Wow. It's already done, man. You can't justify it, DC. What are you doing? How? What are you doing? It's matching cheat. DC, man. You're so much better for me. No! It's a fucking cheat, man. Because every time I've met people like this, you give people a chance and then they let you down and I ain't going to give people loads and loads of chances and it's not a personal thing I don't dislike him I wish him all the best mm. but I'm not going to go down that road anymore
is that he's kept that all quiet. And I can assure you that he has done that. He has kept that quiet from uh, Robbie and he's kept that quiet from me and everybody else on AFTV. No one knew about all this. I've been re reading it today. There's things about knives, kidnapping, taking, taking pictures of her and, and all of that, like, you know. Now, I can assure you none of this was ever mentioned at AFTV. And I, I, I am now, now that it has come to light today, Robbie has done the right thing and got rid of, rid of him like. If you are patient in one moment of anger, you will escape a hundred days of sorrow. DT, who's very well known for appearing on Arsenal Fan TV, has had his sentence tripled in a court case that I didn't even know was going on. He said that Arsenal Fan TV regular had his prison sentence handed down by court, tripled after violently stalking and assaulting, kidnapping his former partner. Liam Goodenough, who is known for his passionate rants on AFTV's YouTube channel under the nickname DT, was handed an initial 12 month sentence on November the 5th, 2021, but it seems he must have broken these terms because he was taken back to court. He had a restraining order of 10 years, not to go near his former partner. But it seems the court found that he broke this order when another situation happened. It was said that the 42 year old stalked his former partner as she went on a date and was jealous, sending the victim's brother messages threatening suicide and demanded to know the location of the victim. Using a tracking feature on her phone, good enough drove to the hotel of the victim and verbally assaulted her. As well as assaulting her companion, he then proceeded to photograph her and then dragged the victim out of the hotel room into his car, suggesting that he had a knife and that their son was in the vehicle. However, when she realised that her son was not in the car, she tried to escape. A bystander intervened and the victim was able to get out of the car while Goodenough escaped. Goodenough's 12 month sentence was referred to the Court of Appeal and on January the 13th it was increased to 3 years. Goodenough subjected the victim to a shocking and frightening ordeal. No beast is more savage than man possessed with power answerable to his reign. DT did the unforgivable. A man now behind bars. As he looks back on his life. How a man let what made him. Destroy him. Shaka, I've had enough. I backed the guy all the time. It was fucking stupidity. How you can slide and tackle like that in the box. I'm sorry, there's no defending it. Fucking sort it out because I'm bored of it. And fuck the Premier League and Sky and whoever fucking played the game tonight. Sending us up here on a Monday when we've got a game on Thursday. No consideration to the fans. Fucking arseholes, man. Shit day. Bollocks to it. I just feel we pay too much respect to Spurs. Why are we paying respect to them? Fuck them, fuck their fans, fuck their badge and everything else. Fuck Tottenham, all right? North London is still red. Let's just remember that, all right? And then he started going, and then he told the fans to fuck off. Sorry, captaincy needs to be stripped. It's another bullshit performance. Oh, He's frustrated. I'm, yeah, but hold on. Hold on, Robbie. Meza Ozil was frustrated in the Europa League final. You're still winning on him. They weren't all booing him, were they? they were, he, he was frustrated. Really because there was fucking hardly anyone there. You couldn't hear us. That's probably why. Well, he was What's going on? Tell us what the fuck is going on. There's a, shut the fuck up. Seriously, shut up, you fucking dickhead. Shut If you want to say something, you come on here and say something, yeah? Shut up. Move yourself. Relax your fucking gums. Shut How many games have I been to this year? Every single fucking game, you silly mug. Fuck off about how many games. You've been to more games than me. I've forgotten more games than you know, knobhead. Shut up! Listen, let's stay on. Listen, fucking let's just, knobheads. Oi, oi, let's stay Dickhead. focused on this. I got fucking knobheads over there. Listen. I bet this is your first fucking game, you prat. Fuck off. Fuck off, stay, dickhead. Stay on this. Nah, right? fuck him, stay man. On, fuck what, him. Hold on. What do we have to do? What do we have Get to do? Get rid of the likes of fucking Stan Kroenke. Unless they're going to invest in this club and unless they're going to do something about it, it's never going to change because we're in a never-ending cycle. And you've got dickheads like that behind me that sit there and think it's acceptable. Oh, oh, hey, if you want hits, why are you here? Why are you here trying to get an interview? Shut the fuck up, fuck off home there, dickhead. Piss off, man. No, no, I'm not listening to this bullshit now. No, I'm not listening to it, Robbie. 
Do you know what? It's my son's ninth birthday today. And do you know what I done for him? I left him at home. That, no, no, no. I'm saying that that I left him at home, so I didn't ruin his birthday. That's what I did. Left him at home because I knew if I brought him here, they would fuck it up. So I said to him, "No, you enjoy the, your day. I'll see you tonight." Cool. Embarrassing. Emery out tonight. End of story. Tell me that you 